Celtic and Bad Project Winter Open Battle to Lush this weekend, Overwatch players enjoy playing the piano in the new Powers map, Darksiders War Mastered Edition, officially revealed for Switch. We also do have the first chapter of Left Alive revealed in latest gameplay video. Final Fantasy VII is coming to Nintendo Switch soon. Persona Q2 won't be voiced in English, and that will be in Japanese instead. And there is so much more to discuss for this loop, guys. And now we're down to our first news update. Project Winter is launching its open beta this weekend, which will end by February 3rd. This is a co-op survival game where backstabbing and betrayal can bring you very far. There will be eight players and everyone is stuck in a snowy wilderness where you would need to survive by gathering supplies, fending off wild animals, as well as make some repairs. But not everyone in the group has the same intention, so there will be Two traitors that will stop the whole team from escaping. Just as long as we remember. To trust no one. Our second news update, Overwatch players enjoy playing the piano in the new Paris map. Overwatch Paris map, which is out now, is super fun since it has a playable grand piano. The piano is fully functional and players are able to pay tunes on it using their guns. That is actually the only way to play the piano in this map with the use of a gun. You might think that that would be horrid, however, some players have already stepped up to the plate and were able to share some videos of the tunes that they played in the game. One even playing B2 Bin support Elise and the current favorite is the Love and Rose. You can try it out for yourself and this is our Overwatch News update. Heading forward to our third news update, Darksiders More and Mastered Edition officially revealed for Switch. THK Nordic was able to announce that the Darksiders War and Mastered Edition is actually releasing for the Nintendo Switch. This will happen on April 2nd, 2019, and it is available to be purchased in both the retail store as well as the eShop, which is Nintendo's digital storefront. The game will cost you about $29.99 for the Switch. And also, according to a leak, Darksiders 2 will also be reaching the Switch, but none of that has been confirmed as of right now. Guys, we will know more soon as announcements are made. Down to our report news update, first chapter is of Left Alive revealed in latest gameplay video. Square Enix was able to share a new gameplay video for their upcoming game Left Alive. We are introduced to one of the three protagonists named Mikhail. Mikhail starts with a handgun and a few tools, and the catch is that the handgun has no bullets left. Left Alive's director Toshifumi Nabishima explains that the game is more on survival rather than only a third-person shooter. Left Alive is set to launch on February 28 in Japan and March 5 in the West for PC and PlayStation 4. Let's move forward to our next news update. Final Fantasy VII is coming to Nintendo Switch soon. Our well-loved RPG Final Fantasy VII is coming to the Nintendo Switch. This was seen in a short commercial where we can see the game on the Switch with the words Final Fantasy VII coming soon. The intention for this was announced by Square Enix back in September 28th and other Final Fantasy games are expected for the handheld hybrid console as well as the Final Fantasy IX, X, and X2 Remaster and Final Fantasy XII. The Zodiac Edge, no specific date was given, but we are sure that it will arrive sometime this year. How can it change 
Up next, praise and acute the new same Labyrinth will be arriving in North America and Europe later this year. However, Atlas USA confirmed that the game will only have a Japanese voice track with English subtitles. This could be quite disappointing for fans as previous Persona games had English voice to work in them. But this time around, it may not be cost effective for Altus. Our Persona Q3 was made available in Japan on November 29, 2018, and it will be available in the West on June 4, 2019 for the Nintendo DS. And that was a short video clip for that. Up next, a Battle Right Royal free to play release date has been officially announced. A stand like to this Battle Right Royal will be exiting the Steam Early Access and will be a free to play game on February 19th. This action packed game will be in Battle Royal mashup will have players jumping off the back of a dragon and skydiving on a Talon Island. The game's map is about 30 times larger as compared to the regular Battle Right games, and champions can be chosen and are optimized for Battle Royale. It will have a unique fighting style, and both the combat and input system will still be the same. And up next, a 4 honors year of the Harbinger is now underway. A new hero and so much more are coming in. There will be 4 seasons available throughout the year. The first season called the Vortiger is available now and will be running guys until the end of April. Season 2 will be from May to July on the other hand. And Season 3 will run from August to October. And the fourth and final season will be by December. This will also come with a special Halloween event for October. Save the dates and mark your calendars with that one. As they serve the purpose of survivability to allow not only you as a player, but your whole team to stay alive. By using Sinister Shield, you sacrifice your own HP to a teammate in need. The last feat you unlock as a Black Friar is Umbral Shelter, which grants a shield to all teammates in your range. Vortiger begins January 31st, and so can begin your legacy with the Black Prior. See you on the battlefield. Moving forward, guys, the next character announced to be coming to Mortal Kombat 11 is the guy with the cybernetic laser eye cano. The announcement was made via Twitter with an image of a shirtless cano with his cybernetic eye glowing orange. He is also holding, uh, holding a huge knife and a post read grid personified Kano returns to Mortal Kombat. This may not come as a surprise to many as Kano has been a frequent character available in the Mortal Kombat games. So Mortal Kombat 11 will launch by April 23rd this year. That will be for PC, PS4, Xbox One and of course you can check that too in Switch. That news update for it was for Mortal Kombat 11. And up next, a new medieval RTS called Banner Band will be having an open beta by February 8 to 10. The game has been announced a couple years ago and Kickstarter campaign had been set up for it but was cancelled. However, the game's development still pushed through when it is not expected to launch by February 21st. The game features dynamic environments as well as semi-fantasy medieval realm called Valtoria. Base building is also available as well as resource management and Batterman will be available guys for PC. The battle was lost and suddenly the sky appeared dark and so seemed the future.
And up next, Loot Cave with resupply crates added in PUBG's latest patch. Player announced the Battle Gods has a new patch coming and it comes with a Loot Cave with resupply crates. The announcement was made via trailer video. The cave is found in the northeastern corner of the Vikendi map and can be seen behind some walls. There are three entrances for it. The entrances are black with racks, so you could either blast your way in with a grenade or run the wall down with a vehicle. Or better yet, just wait for Isambad to break it out and just enter without any effort. Well, time is flying so fast, we're now heading down to our final news update for this loop. Today's feature deal is a turn-based strategy and real-time tactics of video game Total War Warhammer. It is currently available at the very best price of 11 euro and 24 cents on Lycan Steam. It retails about 59 euro and 99 cents. So guys, if you want to get this game today, you can get to save like 80% on your city key purchase. To check out more of our feature deal, just simply type in the command exclamation mark deal in our chat and be smart enough compare your city k prices only here again at allkshop.com and this is now our final news update so take a closer look on how the total warhammer hammer looks like Breach has released a trailer for its newest class, the Pyromancer. According to QZ Games, the class excels in setting enemies on fire, sustaining the DPS from burning and finishing them off by consuming burn stacks. Players will be able to sample the class for free from February 6 at 4 p.m. GMT to February 7 at 6 a.m. GMT. To do so, just enter the code Free Pyro either in the Breach Game Launcher or in your player profile on the PlayBreach.com website. Breach is uh, currently in early access on PC. Up next, Grip Combat Racing has a new update coming up and it is called the Big Ass Update. The update is packed with this stuff giving an overhaul to the game's online lobby as well as matchmaking systems. A rebalance will also be available for the game's AI and catch-up systems. There will be new modes, race sources or courses, new vehicles as well as some unannounced content. You can check out the complete breakdown at the Big Ass Update in the game's official site, Group Combat Racing launched back in February 2016. The PC system requirements for Devil May Cry 5 have been finalized. Those wishing to play the Demon Slaying Adventure on PC will need a 64-bit version of Windows 7 or later, an i5-4460 or FX6300 processor or better, 8 gigs of RAM, a GTX 760 or Radeon R7 260X with 2 gigs of VRAM and 35 gigs of storage space. You'll need either at least an i7-3770 or FX9590 and a GTX 1066GB or Radeon RX 488GB to hit the recommended specs. Capcom also recommends the use of an X input controller.
Developer Mercury's team announced that a new playable character named Aneska will be joining Space Lords. Aneska is not totally new to the game as she had been the fearsome final boss in the campaign Hate's Betrayal that launched last year. Since then, Space Lords community asked if she could be a recruitable character for the game. Aneska, aka the Scrooge of Phobos, was an alpha operative of the Hades division. She is known as the most lethal match raider in the battlefield. The gameplay trailer for Power Rangers Battle for the Grid has been revealed by developers and away. We get to see the blue, green, and yellow rangers. There will or there will be some screen filling attacks as well as some assist and tag options. Battle of the Grid will actually launch with online ranked as well as casual modes plus story mode. Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is expected to be priced at around $20 and it will be available by April this year for PC, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Devolver Digital's newest game called Ape Out is supposed to launch next week, but it has been delayed for a late February launch, specifically February 28. You will get to play as a huge gorilla going amok in what looks like an office building, a park, a harbor, and even a forest. And also, just because you are an ape, you cannot use guns, you actually can. It offers a free-following or free-flowing approach to its combat, plus the dynamic jazz soundtrack will keep you at the ready. Ape Out will be available for PC and Switch. After being delayed for so long, it looks like Crackdown 3 will really be releasing this February 15. Previously, what we had been saying is the game's multiplayer mode, but this time we get to see the game's single player campaign that features Sir Terry Crews as well as Agent Isaiah Jackson, which all leads up to a boss fight with Reza Khan. We first heard about this game during E3 2014 and delays were made, stating that the developers would want to deliver a gaming experience that their fans deserve. Due to popular demand, Battlefield 5's multiplayer game called Squad Comcast will be extended two weeks, meaning it will run up until February 13 on Wednesday. Squad Comcast is a smaller version of the 64-player Comcast match where two teams of eight are further broken down into two squads of four. There will be three flags to take control of in the smaller versions of Aris, Rotterdam and Hamada maps. Players will have to control the flags until the rival team runs out of response.
Bungie will be making changes to the clan system for Destiny 2's sixth season and the upcoming Joker Wilds expansion releasing in March. Season of the Drifter, aka Season 6, will see clans become a combination of mechanics from Year 1 and Year 2. Completing activities out in the world will become the main way for leveling clans, but weekly clan bounties will also reward large amounts of clan XP, not to mention legendary gear. Changes to Ethereal Keys and Iron Banner bounties will be made as well. The first-person horror adventure game from IMGN.pro is free to keep for a limited time on Steam. The game is set in the Ural Mountains and is inspired by true events surrounding the mysterious death of nine Russian hikers. Oh, and it's narrated by British actor Sean Bean. Players will explore the dangerous mountain and to find clues as to what caused the fate of the hikers. You will have until February 4 to add it to your library for free. A few fans have been asking Bioware about microtransactions in Anthem, and the devs have been happy to clear up a few concerns. General Manager Casey Edson reiterated that microtransactions item are optional, cosmetic only, and earnable through playing. Also, all post-launch content features and story will be free. As for whether crafting materials can be purchased with real money, executive producer Mark Dara had just one word to say. No. Anthem will release on the, the 22nd. Now we're down to our last headline. This is our feature deal of the day. Our feature deal is a turn-based strategy and real-time tactics video game Total War Warhammer. It is currently available at the best price of 11 euro and 24 cents only, while in Steam the price is 59 euro and 99 cents. Get this game today through our trusted store and save 80% on your CD key purchase. To get more of today's deals, type in exclamation mark deal in the stream chat now. Make the smart move and head over to allkeyshop.com to compare CDQ prices and save more.